Tunis Makar kind of has a... It, it's got its own culture, because it's, it's American, but it also has a lot of Balinese influences. Can you just uh, talk about what you have observed about, just culturally, about the group coming into it? Um, when I came in, you know, that difference of not being able to look at music or not having any kind of real notation like of the, of the variety that we're used to, that was a, a definite adjustment I had to make. And I mean, I had never played gamelan before in my life. And then to come into this group who's, you know, very proficient in gamelan uh, performance and just to learn from the, from the very basics. Um, and, you know, the first few weeks I had my notation and, um, you know, was quickly encouraged to lose it and just um, start learning by ear. So that was um, kind of scary, to, you know, to be honest. It was very intimidating at first. Um, but I soon learned that um, how how the how the gamelan functions and and how I can learn the music without um, without this reliance on the written notation. And I learned to um, depend on other people and how my part um, fits in with other people. And that that's still uh, something I'm totally figuring out. And I think it takes a long, really long time to figure that out. It's such a complex type of music. Um, but that kind of gentle or sometimes not so gentle push by the other members of the group was kind of a, a different culture shock um, for certainly someone coming from a Western tradition as we all do that where we really rely on on music um, I remember I for one of my grad school projects I had interviewed Made and got to sit down with him and I had been in the group for about six months or so and got to sit down with him um, a while back and really ask a lot of different questions about the gamelan and Balinese culture and, and how it relates and um, that was really an eye-opening thing for me because I got to to hear a lot about how the community is, is, is so important and there's not really you know there are different levels of of musicianship in the group some people are play the more advanced parts but and some people play the more basic parts but we are all very connected and there's no one more important than others and you know we're all very connected and how we rely upon each other and that was kind of an eye-opening thing because I always thought me coming in like the basic melody part like maybe I was somehow inferior to other people that were playing the more advanced parts and that kind of um, kind of gave me some reassurance that and kind of was an eye-opening moment that really it is a community endeavor and um, there is no one person. We're all very equally reliant upon each other. Cool. What's, uh, what's your favorite part of playing with Tunis Makar? I think um, I, I love to travel. I spent um, five years living abroad and um, I, I really miss... I had knew I had to come back to the States at some point and kind of um, enter back into reality and it's I think my favorite thing about Tunas Makar is that it allows me to twice a week um, to still be living here in Denver in my hometown, but to really travel to a, a foreign culture and be very connected with a foreign culture um, just here, here in my own backyard. And it's a really powerful experience to, to try to come into this, um, this community that does have so many Balinese cultural influences and so many people who have been around for so long and really, um, even though they're Americans, they really understand the Balinese culture and it uh, has been a really wonderful experience coming in and it, it makes me feel that sense of adventure even though I'm only 20 minutes away from my home.